wish you guys could be here, but as we know, we're gonna we're gonna make do with what we have. So, um, just a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, I want to congratulate two people that are, are uh, really important to me and close to me: Bob Mulcahy and C. Vivian Stringer, both inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame last night, which was uh, really really cool. Uh, very worthy, both of them, and uh, you know I've had such impact on Rutgers. Bob was a great partner here as our, as my athletic director uh, for a lot of years and uh, helped us build this program. And see Vivian Stringer, obviously her record speaks for itself, but uh, an icon in in sports. Period. Forget woman, just women's college basketball alone, but uh, in sports overall. So really, a, a tremendous congratulations to them. Um, we got a game to play, right? Michigan State. Here we go. You guys got the uh, depth chart. Just a couple things. Um, my use of or, you know, is for several reasons. Um, it could be injury. It could be competitive. It could be not certain. Uh, I won't go into in depth what the ors are. Uh, they are what they are. We'll, we'll find out at game time. Um, but other than that, I'm uh, I'm good to answer any questions you might have. We're going to go to Tom Canavan with the first question. Hey, Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Tom? Good. I guess the, the most basic question is, do you know what to expect from your team? I mean, two wins last year, and I mean, what what should people expect to see? Well, you know, I, I have an idea, but until you go play, you really don't know. A lot of coaches will tell you, you know, they know. I wish I knew the secret. Um, I heard once Bear Bryant, you know, the guy said, well, what do you think? He said, you know what? Stop trying to figure that out a long time ago. So if if Bear couldn't figure out it, probably Greg can't figure it out. So we're gonna we're all going to find out, right? We've got a game here, and we have our countdown, countdown clock going, and uh, it's coming. And as I keep telling the team, whether you're ready or not, we're going to kick the ball off at noon. And, uh, you know, we need to be ready. So... They're doing a really good job. They've they've worked really hard in their preparation, and uh, as we get into game week now, I mean this is it. This is this is why you coach. This is why you play. So uh, I think there's an excitement level. Uh, you know, you you could tell when the excitement level when we got back to work took a big jump, and you can tell today the excitement level in the building is at a different level. Bobby Darren. Hey, Coach, um, can you give an update on the on the quarterbacks? I know it's at war on there, but how how's it been the competition wise, and and just an update from last week? Sure, Bobby. Um, first off, I thought all the quarterbacks. This is really a really good group. I mean, they're together, uh, they help each other, they're competing, um, but really a tremendous group of guys, and led by Coach Gleason. You know, he's not only coordinating the offense, but he's coaching the quarterbacks. And I think doing a doing a tremendous job, um, but when you look at really, you know, there's a reason that it's it's Art and Noah as the or, because they've kind of established themselves as as the top two, but it's not a huge drop off. Uh, I really thought Cole did a, a very good job. I mean, I thought he was uh, he is he's a good quarterback, and um, you know, when you look at Evan, a young guy, but. I think Evan's going to be uh, is going to be a real good player as well. So I'm 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 encouraged by what we saw, um, and the two guys that are that are on the chart as an or, uh, they're both really really good quarterbacks in my opinion. The job they've done in their preparation has been very good. Chris Eisman. Hey Greg. Uh, hey Chris, oh, how you doing? Good. How are you? Just uh, with Aaron Krugshank, I mean, obviously we all know about his speed. I mean, what are you looking forward to, what he can bring to your offense, and, and what have you seen so far? Well, you know, he is very fast. That's documented. But Aaron is a, is a special guy. Like, just the energy he brings to practice every day. He, he, he raises the level of everyone around. He loves the game of football. He competes his rear end off. And uh, he, he's been a very big addition uh, to the program. We're very excited about the fact that, uh, that we were able to get him. And uh, I think, I think not only in the offense but in the return game, I think he could be be someone special. How's that? Gonna go to Keith Sergeant. Hey, Greg. I want to ask you about your roster makeup. Um, I noticed that you have the highest percentage of, of uh, Jersey players on the roster from uh, Jersey high schools uh, since early in the first tenure. Um, 
I know your recruiting base has expanded a bit, but just as a general recruiting focus, is New Jersey still like the focus? And I guess the second part of that question would be, considering about 45 of your Jersey guys are believed to be walk-ons, was it an emphasis to hit the Jersey high school is really hard for preferred walk-ons after you first arrived? Great question, Serge. Great question. Um, first off, New Jersey will always be the, the beginning and the end of everything we do. Right? And there's a lot of reasons for that. Number one, it's a great football, high school football state. There's great players. There's tremendous high school football coaching. So you get guys that, uh, that are further along in their development and understand the commitment level of playing big-time college football. Um, we will recruit other places, that's for sure, but this is always where it starts and finish. And as I tell our coaches, uh, let's not be flying over a bunch of kids when we leave New Jersey. If we, if we go somewhere else to get players, it's because we need to, and there's good football played all around the country, but we happen to be in one of the, one of the hotbeds, and we've got to treat that uh, with the utmost importance first and foremost. Uh, good question about the walk-ons. Um, those of you who have followed our program know they're, they're a critical part of what we do. Um, I don't know if anybody can. I never did a study on it, but I don't think anybody can claim. You know, seven of the We had seven walk-ons that became captains of our football team when I, when I first go around here. Uh, that's, that's a high number. We've had uh, several that have gone on to play in the NFL. When you talk about guys like Brandon Rankart, Gary Brackett, um, uh, Michael Burton, who's actively playing right now for the uh, for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, who else was Kevin Brock had a really good career. So that to me, you know, when you identify guys and then you develop them. Jay Butler, tremendous, you know, our strength and conditioning program, tremendous element to the walk-on program. You see guys develop the coaching staff, how they develop the players over the years, and a lot of it goes back to the very beginning. I personally watch every every walk-on that we offer, right? Because when I do that, I know that they can come in here and help our program. And uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't present them to be admitted to school unless I really believe that. Uh, so it's, it's a very big process, and it started up again right away. Um, I, I actually remember the night, as soon as we finished that first wave and we went into the dead period, we went right to walk-ons because we started recruiting those walk-ons right then and there. So uh, I think it's a critical, critical element to our program. And it always will be. Next is Zach from the New York Post. Hey, Greg, how are you? Doing well, Zach. How are you? Good. What? I mean, how could you sum up the last several months? I mean, you, you can come back to Rutgers and the virus hits, and then you don't think you're going to have a season, and, and now you're having a season, and now here you are. I mean, it must have just been kind of a roller coaster for you and your players. Well, it has been a roller coaster. That's a good way to put it. But it's been a roller coaster for all of us, right? I mean, look what we're doing right now. You guys are sitting at home, and, and I'm standing in a podium with no one but the technical people in front of me. The whole thing's a roller coaster, right? Um, but that's the world we're in right now. So who can who can really thrive? One of the things we talked about at the very beginning when this thing when this thing hit was, you know, it's not good enough to survive. You know, that's what that's what a lot of people tried to do. You didn't know how long it was going to be. You know, we wanted to thrive throughout this. And we don't know when this, quote-unquote, is going to end. So that was a big part of what, what we've talked to our team about. And I, I believe they have. I believe we've improved. I believe we've learned a lot about ourselves. Um, so it's been very productive. But as it is for everybody, you know, in our country and around the world, it certainly has created a whole different set of challenges than we're accustomed to. Our next question is from James Crash. Hey, Greg, how are you? Doing well, Crouch. How are you? Excellent. Um, obviously, with, with Purdue, with Jeff Brom testing positive. Someone, you, told, me, someone told me that uh, you created a team recently. Is that true? We, yes, we did. We, we chopped All falls. Right. All right, man. Congrats. That's Thank you. Um, obviously, uh, I'm sure you saw Jeff Brom tested positive at Purdue. I know they're waiting on a presumption. So this is a two-parter. One, are you doing anything with the staff to kind of separate yourselves so if God forbid something happened, you'd have enough experience and, and continuity to have a staff on the field on game day. And two, it got forbid you test positive. Fans have asked, who's the acting head coach? Well, let me start with two first. You got any plans on Saturday, Crouch, or what? You, you ready? You know, I did win the Powder Puff game my senior year. Shut out. I love it. 
I love it. Yeah, we have, all kidding aside, we have contingencies ready for all of that. Uh, I'm I'm not going to you know go public with that, but certainly, um, fortunately, you know we're in a position where we were we were able to hire not only our, a, a great coaching staff. Rutgers made that uh, possible um, through the resources they provided, but we were also able to hire a support staff behind those guys. So some quality control guys, uh, some player development guys. So. I think we have some depth in our coaching staff if god forbid something like that happened um we have plans for all of it but certainly you know that that's not how we've practiced everything so there would be an adjustment for sure and you know um the good thing for purdue is if there ever is a good thing in something like that is they have a whole week to prepare that could happen friday night you know you, or, or friday afternoon you find out you get the results um, you know we have daily testing which is which is a great Thing. But daily testing just tells you where you stand on that day. You know, it's it's being careful and doing all the applying and doing all the things that we ask for in our protocols and procedures. And it's not easy. You know, it, it, just like everybody else, you get fatigued. You know, I, uh, I walk out. I just came to here and I'm rushing out and I forgot this. And Gene, my assistant, coach, your mask. And I run back and get my mask. Right. Th those things you just we have to stay vigilant about all that. And that's what I talk to the team. I talk to the team every single day about COVID-19 and being our number one opponent, because that's facts. If, if we, for a minute, let our guard down, uh, it could be a big, big mess. Question is from Justin Walters, picks 11. Hi, Coach. Two-part question here. I know you've spoken in the past that you plan on wearing a mask on the sideline. Was wondering if your coaching staff will also be adopting that same approach. And then the second half of the question is, does this week feel like an accomplishment with all that you have endured, I guess, once you do reach Saturday? Well, yeah, to answer the first part, everybody will have a mask. Um, our players will have a, a gator that they will have when they're not playing. They're going to have it up. Um, the coaches will have masks on the sideline and in the press box. So, yes, we'll, we'll continue – as I've told them, it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing, because that's one of the, we've learned a lot. I mean, going through this for the last what it is four or five months together. Forget when they were at home alone, but together, what gets us is when you get into an environment that you feel comfortable in. You're around your family. Well, if you haven't been with your family, and now all of a sudden you're with your family and you let your guard down, that's where you. That's where we've had guys get it. We've had people get it when they've left this community. That's where they've they've contracted the disease and brought it back. So we're very, very aware of that. When you look at a lot of the teams, college and pro alike, that have had outbreaks, they've been road teams, teams that have gone on a trip and come back, and then that following week. So we've studied all that, and we're really, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you, I'm a little nervous that we have to start on the road, but we're going to be super vigilant about our travel procedures and, you know, a zillion different things. Will Gilkison, who many of you know, who's a captain of ours here in 05, He's been point person on that with our doctors, and he's done an incredible job down to the way we're seating the airplane, the rooming at the hotel, because those are the things you have to really stay on top of. Um, so uh, is it an accomplishment? I think every day is an accomplishment. You know, when you're dealing with this stuff, there's so much more work to be done by your staff and by your players than there used to be, yet you're still going to play a game that you're held accountable for. So uh, it's a tremendous effort, and I think – as I've told the team, um, they should be proud of what they've done so far. It's not a small task. Question is uh, Chris Nowalski. Hey, coach. Uh, I know there's a bunch of freshmen that are listed on the, on the depth chart. You know, in a year like this, with less practice time and everything, you know, what have they done to kind of make that step up already? Well, you know, I've always been this way. I look at it as whoever gives us the best chance to win, they're going to be on the depth chart. So. Um, if it's a freshman, it's a freshman. And we've just tried to, you know, have as many opportunities for guys to show what they can do. Certainly when you're a freshman, you start in the whatever the lowest team is, fourth team or third team, whatever it was. But when a guy makes plays, then you raise his level. And if he continues to make plays and do his job consistently, then he keeps climbing. And some of those freshmen, you know, it's all a relative experience, right? It's relative to the other guys on the roster. But they're there for a reason. They've earned it. Nobody, uh, nobody around here gets any gifts. If you're on the depth chart in a one or two position, you've earned it.
And our final question is to Steve Politti. Hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Steve? Good. I've got a big picture question for you. I'm wondering how you feel now about the overall state of your program heading into this season. And do you feel like the ceiling for what you can accomplish is even higher than it was when you the first time around in 2000 you took over? I do. I do feel that the ceiling's higher. Um, I feel good about where we are with the structure of our program. We've had interrupted time to get it implemented. That's the only thing that, that uh, gives me pause. But now we've had a stretch, and we'll just continue that. I think when you take over a program, uh, it's, it's about installing your culture. And people say, well, go install it. But it's, then it's learning to live the culture. Right? Anybody can get up in front of a room and give a lecture about this is our culture. But being able to hold each other accountable to that culture over time. And that culture is everything. It's the way we live our life. It's the collective way that we live as a team, as a program. Now, it doesn't mean that you take away individuality. You know, if you look at our guys, they all look different. They're from different areas. They sound different. But I think there's got to be commonality in your program that's your culture. It sets you apart from, say, another program. And time, you try to accelerate it. As a coach, you try to accelerate it as much as you can. But sometimes just living through it is what's going to allow it to become stronger and stronger. And we have a saying around here, don't touch the stove, it's hot. Well, I can tell a guy that over and over again, but sometimes they got to touch the stove to really believe that it's hot. And that takes time. So we're developing our program in every area, whether it be in strength and conditioning, football, academics. Uh, it doesn't matter. All those areas are being developed. Um, and culturally, we're, we're, we like to think that we're vertically aligned and, and all doing it in the same direction. And that's... That's what I feel best about. We have we have a bunch of young men that have worked incredibly hard, so that's good. You know, when you take over a, pro a program, that's not always the case. Sometimes the work ethic is an issue. I would tell you that that wasn't an issue here. That the guys have worked very hard. So now it's time to go put it out against somebody else and and kind of see where we stand. Thank you, coach. Thank you, guys. I will. Uh, I guess we're going to talk again Thursday. And uh, we'll get you some players during the week, and that'll kind of be the flow we get into. And then um, I, somebody told me, I guess we're not going to see you out there in Michigan, but maybe that'll change before the end of the week. But we'll talk again Thursday. Thanks, guys.